Shalom. We will say a few words of Torah regarding Parashat Va'era, the coming Shabbat. Parashat Va'era is a very important parasha. It's talking about the beginning of the redemption of the Jewish people from Egypt. And of course, the ten plagues which befell the land of Egypt, the ten Aseret Hamakot, the ten plagues. In this particular parasha, we will read only about seven plagues. Only in next parasha, Parashat Bo, will be the conclusive plagues, the last three ones. And that's the idea that we have to explore together in this parasha. If we want to have a connection with last week's parasha, we have to remind everyone that at, at the conclusion of last week's parasha, Moshe was uh, so to speak, he was angry that because of him and his brother Aharon, who came to Paro to, to ask him to give the freedom to the Jewish people. So when they came, the, the reply, the reaction of Paro was unexpected. He said, Mi Adonai asher You come on behalf of uh, a name, name of God, Yudke Vavke. Who is he? I don't know him. And then he said something extremely catastrophic for the Jewish people. He said, and now I am going to tell the Jews who are enslaved anyway, but they will have to provide until now, we provided for them the bricks, the straw, and all the things that is required in order to build up and to do their job. But now they will have to supply all this, which means the situation has become, has worsened to such a point that is extremely painful for the Jewish people, not knowing what to do. So they came to the Jewish people when they heard what happened. They came to Moshe and Aaron and they said to them, you are at fault. You have caused us a terrible, a terrible thing that because of you now, our, uh, our travel in, 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 in the land of Egypt, our slavery now has become worse and worse. Moshe who anyway from the very beginning was not very, was extremely reluctant to fulfill his mission that God has bestowed upon him to go and be the redeemer of the Jewish people. But Moshe was very humble. And in the beginning he said, Mi anuchi ki el paro. Please God, who am I? Why do you send me? Send my brother. But God told him, I know what I'm doing. You go. And your brother Aaron will join you. He will speak for you, and he will be the one above him to tell him what is to be done. Moshe had no choice. He accepted the mission, of course. So he went with Aaron to Paro. And that's when the crisis began, even worse than ever before. He spoke to Paro, and the situation worsened terribly. Of course, the parasha will tell us about some of the great uh, signs, some miraculous signs that Moshe performed before Paro, before the beginning of the plagues. So the parasha begins this way. By the bear Elohim El Moshe. And Elohim, one of the names of God, 
said to Moshe, spoke to Moshe, Vayomer elav ani Hashem. And he said to him, I am Hashem, Hashem Yudke Vavke. Let me first explain what is the difference between the name of God, Elohim, and the name of God, same God, of course, which comes in the word Amonai, Yudke Vavke. Yud and He and Vav and He. The difference is that whenever the Torah mentions the, the name Elohim, it's considered to be Midat Haddin. It's a measure of justice, harsh justice. Which means usually when God is angry, we use the term, we use the name Elohim. Because it represents uh, an expression of, of hardness, of justice. But, on the other hand, the name Hashem Yudke Vavke is Midat Rahamim. It's a measure of compassion. Now, we see that both names are here, Elohim and Ammonai, both of them appear in the same pasuk. And Elohim spoke to Moshe, and he said to him, I am Yud Kevavke, I am Hashem. Does it make sense? Because on one hand, Elohim is mitat din a measure of justice. On the other hand, Ani Hashem, it's a measure of compassion. How can we reconcile them? Well, Number one, we have to understand that God was exasperated, so to speak, with the words of Moshe, because Moshe turned to him at the conclusion of last week's parasha, and he said to him, God, Lama Hashem, why did you worsen the situation of these people? Why? Because when you sent us, the situation has, became, has become extremely worse. Lama ze vayomer Hashem, lama hareota l'ama ze, lama ze shelachtani, and he said vayomar, Hashem, why, why did you mistreat your people? Why did you send me? We can understand that Moshe is not talking about himself. He's worried about his people. His heart is only consecrated only to the people of Israel. And he felt their terrible uh, pain. So therefore, these words came out from him. But that's not the way you address God. Therefore, God, in a way, He's angry at Moshe for talking to him in such a way. Therefore, we're, he's using the term Elohim. But then, the tone of God became sweeter and softer. Ayomer elav ani Hashem. So we said, how do we reconcile those two expressions? We can understand that in a very human way. On one hand, God expresses some kind of anger towards Moshe, but at the same time he understands Moshe. God knows the heart of Moshe. He knows that Moshe is dedicated to his people. And out of feelings of, for his people, that's why he said those words. So that's why Hashem had no choice. He has to show to Moshe, that's not the way you address God. So therefore he's using the term Elohim, but at the same time, by Omer Elav Ani Hashem, I understand Moshe. Therefore, a measure of justice of Elohim is followed immediately by a measure of compassion. Many times God behaves in such a way that even though sometimes the situation becomes difficult, there is suffering. Let's say a person who is very sick, and now the situation becomes even worse. And anybody could practically say, God, where are you? But the individual doesn't understand 
that it is definitely something that is going to create for him a situation that is much better for him, that will make his life better. So that's why you could find in the same situation uh, an expression Elohim together with Hashem, which means Hashem has to be sometimes hard, but for the sake of the individual, and that's Hashem. That has to do a little bit with Kabbalah, but this explanation is enough to tell us why is it that in the same verse we find Elohim and we find Hashem. So what is it that Hashem is telling Moshe? Lachen, emor livne Israel ani Hashem. Go to tell the people of Israel, because the people of Israel are angered now. Their situation has become, has become worse. So Hashem says to Moshe, tell them, Ani Hashem, I am Yud Kevavke, again, the measure of compassion, which means tell them that I am with them. I am there to help them. If I made it hard, uh, harder for them, it's in order to obtain a situation that is much, much easier for them in the future. As, as, as our sages say, that because the situation has become worse in that slavery of the Jewish people, that's why the Jewish people did not have to stay in Egypt for that long time that God uh, told Abraham Avinu. If you remember, God said to Abraham, our father Abraham, that your, your descendants are going to be enslaved in Egypt for 400 years. But the Jewish people were not enslaved for 400 years, 430 years. Rather, according to one version, it's 210 years, and then the redemption followed, and they were out. According to some Kabbalistic understanding they were exactly 86 years at the time of slavery. What happened to the 400? The answer is because the situation became so painful for the Jewish people, much more than expected before, much more than prepared before. So God made a calculation. Their suffering that became worse is going to be in, is going to take the place of those many years that should have been before and the time of their stay in Egypt was shortened. It was worth it. Of course, who are we to say anything about those things when we're talking about the suffering of all the Jewish people there? So therefore Hashem says to the to Moshe, tell them a more livne Israel. Ani Hashem, not Elohim, I am Hashem, which means I am going to deal with them with a measure of compassion, that they should believe that I am here for them, and I am going to bring them the redemption in four ways. That's what the verse is saying here. Say to the, to the Jewish people, in my name, I am God. I will take you away. That's not the first expression of redemption. I will take you away from your forced labor. And free you from your slavery. That's the second expression of redemption. And I will free you from their slavery. And then comes the third expression of redemption. And I will liberate you with a demonstration of my power. And with great acts of judgment. And here comes now the fourth expression of, uh, of redemption. And I will, I will take you to myself as my nation, as a nation, and I will be 
with you, I will be to you as a God. Now, we have here four expressions of redemption. And that's why, by the way, that's why we drink the night of Pesach four cups of wine. Four cups of wine in accordance with the four uh, expressions of uh, redemption that God used in order to free the Jewish people from the land, from their slavery. So first, Vehotseti. And then, after Vehotseti, he said, Vehitsalti, I shall save you. First, Vehotseti, I will take you out. Then, Vehitsalti etchem, I shall save you. And then, Vegaalti etchem, I will redeem you with the great, with miraculous acts of, uh, of, uh, of, of judgment. Obishvatim gedolim. And then comes the fourth expression, I will take you to myself as my people. Our sages have understood that these four expressions were exactly that which was needed for the Jewish people to become the nation of God. The nation of God, if it was freed in a normal way, they would not become, they would not be able to become the nation of God. As we have explained in past lectures, the nation of God is a nation that must have the traits of character that God, with which God is satisfied. We, we spoke about the character of humbleness, shyness, compassion, kindness, and charitable acts, deeds of charity. And God made sure that this nation, the nation of Israel, is going to become the, the nation that fits to be the nation of God. How? Because of those traits of character. And that's why four expressions of redemption were required here. Because you could redeem a slave, but that doesn't mean that he is really totally free. You have to be free physically and spiritually, at the same time to be ready to accept something that is beyond the possibility or the capability of other nations to accept. And that's why God had to manufacture, to produce a special nation that has to be redeemed in four ways of redemption. So it's not only that he will take them out of Egypt. It's not only that he will save them. It's not only that he will redeem them. But as a conclusion of all this, he will also take them to become his nation. So that forever and ever, the Jewish people will always say, Ki ani Hashem elokechem, It is God, our God, Hamotzi etchem mitachat zivlot mitzrayim, who is bringing you out from under the Egyptian subjugation. And Moshe went to the people of Israel, but they wouldn't listen to him. Why? They could not because of their disappointment and hard work. So they would no, long, they would no longer listen to him. And therefore, and with certain act of uh, humbleness, Moshe Rabbeinu is continuing with his mission, and he turns to God and he says to, to him, the Jewish people doesn't want to listen to me, the children of Israel do not listen to me. And you expect me to convince Paro that he will listen to me? I mean, my people do not listen to me. Pharaoh is going to listen to me? Especially, va'ani aral sefataim, and especially that I have no self-confidence because it's hard for me to speak. There are several explanations as to the, 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 the problem of Moshe. Some say he was, he stuttered. But some of the sages say that it's not. He had a normal speech, but he lost his self-confidence. Therefore, he doesn't know exactly how to even talk. And that's why Hashem is convincing him that he can do he can do that. He definitely is the best redeemer. That's Moshe. 
Remember, Moshe, Hashem chose Moshe. He didn't go to the best rabbi of the Jewish people to become the redeemer of the Jewish people. He chose Moshe. But it's very difficult to understand that, by the way. Because Moshe, who, who, he was a prince. He grew up in the house of Batya, the daughter of Paro. So he was a prince. He even uh, dressed like a, like, a, like a prince of the Egyptians. He did not look Jew, in Jewish. How can you expect the Jewish people to accept him as a redeemer? That was one problem that is very difficult. That's why Moshe was convinced that the Jewish people are not going to believe him. Especially that they saw him, this, this is an Egyptian guy. I mean, God perhaps would have, been, would have decided that perhaps Aharon. Aharon was the prophet of the Jewish people then. Maybe he was better, the better choice to redeem the Jewish people. But God knows what he's doing. He preferred, he saw into the heart of Moshe that he is the best, that he is the one chosen by God to be the redeemer of the Jewish people. That teaches us that, you know, everybody thinks that the Mashiach in our time, maybe, hopefully, he will come. Maybe he will be in the, in, who knows, maybe he will look like a great rabbi or... Uh, it's possible that that's not the case. It's possible that the Mashiach will be, will have a different kind of figure. Maybe he will be a different type of person. Maybe he will not look like uh, any normal rabbi or any, or any prophet. Because God is not looking at the outside of a person. He's looking at the inside of a person. He, look, he looks for purity of the character. And he found them inside Moshe. And he found that there is nobody like Moshe. And that's why Moshe was chosen to be the redeemer. Even the fact that Moshe became a little bit angry at God, but God understands. I understand you, Moshe. Because your heart is dedicated to the Jewish people. Therefore, you are the best. When he says, Mi anu chiki elech el paro, Who am I to go to Paro? Remember? So what was the answer of God? That's, you just gave me now the best sign, the best, the best proof that you are the best choice for me to go and redeem the Jewish people. Because by saying, who am I? You are practically t t saying that you consider yourself as a nobody. I'm looking for a person who has this kind of shyness who has this kind of humbleness. I'm not looking for prophets. I'm not looking for big rabbis. I'm not looking for people of tremendous uh, holiness. I'm looking for a pure heart. And that's what he found in Moshe. That's why Moshe was the choice, the best choice of God to go and redeem the Jewish people. And this parasha continues to tell us about seven plagues that will fall upon the, the nation of Egypt as a, uh, as a prelude to the, to, the, to the redemption that will follow in the next parasha, the other three plagues. Of course, uh, the plague started with the plague of the blood. The water became blood. And then the frogs. And then the lice. And then the, the, uh, the wild animals and the pestilence, and so forth, as you know. And in the next parasha, we will have the three, the three last ones, which culminated with the freedom of the Jewish people. Shabbat Shalom.